Welcome everyone to the Spiritual Freedom Support Call number 18. How's everyone doing this week? Great. Good? Yeah. Good. Doing good, Justin? Good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. Fran? Good. Awesome. I, um, yeah. oh, oh, Cope. Hi. Hi, Is that Cope. You? How are you doing? Hi, this is Cope. Hi, well. Cope. How are you doing? Good. Hello, Cope. Cope. Outstanding. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Okay. I figured that might... It's good to hear you, man. <laughs> Anything exciting <laughs> to report this week, anyone? Uh, I, I want to ask anybody who heard about a human design thing. Human design? No, I don't know. What is it? I recently, it's like, you know, we all have a unique code. I know it tells you what type of personality you have. Right, right. I think it's a genetic code or something. You know, you, uh, it's about your chakras. Okay. Which yeah. ones are open, which one is defined. And it's it's a little complicated to understand at first. But uh, you it's free for anybody. You can enter your details and it will give you what yours is. Are you a manifester? Are you a generator? Your projector, reflector, who you are? You know? Oh, that's interesting. So, I've never heard of that. That's really cool. What is that? Yeah. Is that a, what is it? A website? Yeah, yeah. You can you can Google well, search human design. Yeah, a human design. Huh. And then you can put your details like your date of birth, your birth timing, your birth <coughs> place, and it will show you that. Brandon, you remember when you did my reading um, and you told me your throat chakra is and your, um, you know, third eye chakra is just started, you know, right. developing or something. You yes. say. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I, I immediately remember you because it says the same thing to me that it you know, only those chakras are like defined and rest of them are open. Oh, huh. That's really mm, cool. Yeah, so... Yeah, I'm not so much in chakra, so it was a little, you know, confusing for me. But I remember what you told me, and it's exactly what it showed me. And it tells you uh, what type of personality you are, how you basically handle energies and all, and what you should be doing, uh, right. the basic things you have got born with. Right. The, as per them, it never changes, so who knows. But, but you, you had, know, you say it never changes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, what they say is your genetic code. Basically, you know, mm -hmm. you have born with certain gotcha. things. You have a, you know, certain right. core personality, you know, the way you are, your true self, whatever that is. So it was really interesting. Well, uh, I was reading something and, uh, you know. Well, she told me that at the end of the call. <laughs> 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 now I want to go see it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really cool. It's my. Uh, I am a projector, you know. Uh, a so they've, uh, yeah, I'm a projector. Yeah. Huh. So uh, they 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 will tell you that uh, how many percentage of people are that kind and how and we all have a strategy. All of us, you know. Huh. They what say is if a you follow your projector is basically we are uh, like people like me uh, are good with. Um, you know, um, what, do you, what do you say, assigning people because we know who is best at what. Right, okay. So, you know, so so we are yeah, good yeah, in that. Cool. We cannot start something, but we can right. help people who have started already uh, to, you know, right. work with that. And hmm. we, my strategy is to wait till in, to invite, like, you know, if somebody invites me, if I try to uh, give free advice or try to interfere, it's not right. going to have any value in it. So right, right, that's right. the strategy for that's me. So cool. uh, it's, it's so amazing. They will tell you what, uh, you know, like your board. Um, I will tell you, the chart shows you basically your profile number. Mine is one by three. That everything has a specific meaning and it's so interesting right. if you all of you will see online so then. Right. You know. Who are these? Who are these people? Ah, uh, that that guy. Is, his name is uh, you know, little complicated. I will tell you what. Uh, he he his name was uh, Haru something. Hang on a minute. It's, it's, it's little. Oh, that's okay. You don't you don't have to go. I, I was know. just wondering. Can... Is this like a 
an algorithm or do people involved? Oh no no, it, it's it's a system. It's a basically um, you know it's a it's it's. I think they have a software or I don't know, but it's uh, you you can enter your details and well, you it will like show you. or something. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That's really cool. You have to give us maybe the website or something. Sure. Maybe if you email no, me that's... the website, I can always send it to those who are I interested. Will. Yeah, I will. Awesome. I will. That's cool. I yeah. wanted to announce, um, I think I decided, well, okay, I, I think and I decided are sort of opposite. So I, <laughs> I decided um, this weekend, this Saturday, uh, do we have anything going on Saturday, Christine? Except for me, I won't oh, be around. Oh, no, but Christine, do you remember the thing I've been telling you about, about the essential keys? Yes. So I've been working on, um, because of my experiences lately with the law of attraction and things like that, I've been working on a list of... This is new to me. Well, not the... Well, no, not the thing itself. But okay. I've been working on a list of essential keys to basically making the law of attraction work. So it's basically, recently, anytime I'm manifesting something, anytime I'm working on a desire... I, it's sort of a, a almost a checklist for me. I say, okay, do, is this in place? Is it, it's like the things that really need to be in place to to assure the greatest success with mm -hmm. manifesting your desires. So what is going on is my client is coming and she tends to stay. Yeah, but that'll be, this will be later. Okay. So um, she's coming. What time? Eleven. Eleven. Yeah. Probably have a two or so. Okay. Um, so this weekend I'm going to do a. Um, a webinar, I guess you'd call it, or a teleclass. It's just it's not a series; it's just a one-time thing. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to be talking about these these uh, ten keys. Ten. Yeah, it, it kind of grew. Um, you didn't tell me this. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. You know, Christine's there to this. Um, so Brandon, this... you're about to get in trouble, man. <laughs> Last night there were seven. Well, there's ten. Um, I like it, that. Yeah, it tends to. So, um, the, these 10 keys to getting the law of attraction to work, and it's kind of a, a you know list of guidelines. A bummer that I'll miss part of it. I'm sorry. Um, but So, I'm going to hold that this Saturday. It's going to be a, a premium thing. It's not going to be a free webinar. It's because it's really, really, um, it's just, it, it's very, um, how shall I say it? It's from all of my experiences, especially lately, you know, the blog post you might have read lately about, you know, the zero state, the, you know, some of the stuff you'll already know, mm -hmm. but a lot of the stuff um, will be sort of new. I mean, you'll, re you know, recognize obviously some of the principles, but it's just things to keep in mind to get the law of attraction to work. So I'm going to hold that this Saturday. Um, I do not have a link yet. I will post a link when I send out this recording. Um, and it'll be on YouTube as well. It'll be in the description, so I have the link there. Um, but I'm going to do that this Saturday, just, just because I want to. I want to do it this month, and I mean this month, like next weekend's Christmas. So I mean, it's next week already. Next Sunday. So this weekend's sort of the best weekend. <laughs> I thought you said next Saturday. I thought you said this Saturday. This coming Saturday. This coming Saturday. What time? Um, I'm thinking 2 p.m. 11 uh, 11 a.m. your time, so 2 p.m. Eastern. Oh, uh, I won't be able to. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, it's sort of up in the air right now, what You'll, exact time. Yeah. But, but, I mean, if there's a better time, let me know. But Well, uh, if it's going to be on YouTube, will we all have access? No, th that this will not be on YouTube. The, this call is not the not the webinar. It's a paid webinar. The web the one on Saturday? Yes, correct. That's a paid webinar. I'll be okay. occupied. I'm sorry? So I will be not here, actually. You will not be here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, not be around. I can give you. I won't be. Yeah. All right. So, um, but we will see how that goes. But anyway, I'm just announcing now. I'll give the link later on, once I send out this recording, and I think it'll be a lot of fun because. Um, how much is the class? Seventeen dollars. We're gonna go for because it's a one-time class. Like I'll, I'll still get. Um, I'm gonna. We, if I pay for it, will I be able to get it later? Sure. Yeah. Always. The recording will yeah. be available. Um, yeah, I'll do that. Definitely. The recording will be there, and yeah, it'll be good. So, um, so I just wanted to announce that. I think that'll be a lot of fun, and uh, we'll go with that. So. All right. So moving on. Um, 
let's start with questions that you might have. Anyone? Really? Hello? Yeah, we're here. Free of questions today. Um. <laughs> That's cool. What were you going to say, Justin? Uh, no, I, I'm on nothing. Okay. Friend. Brandon, I yes. I want to ask you, you know, the, the tension uh, post you said. Yes. Do you think uh, when people watch live games, is yes. it that kind of tension it builds, you think? I think that's very similar. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. you know, the tension of, uh -huh. I mean, it depends where you're coming at it from. You know what I mean? Some people get way mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. way too tense about mm -hmm. it. You know, the tension, like I said mm -hmm. in the post, the tension I'm talking about is not like um, anxiety. It's not a negative sort of tension, uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. But, yeah. Yeah, you know, that excitement, like if your team is winning especially or if you're really focusing on them winning or, you know, wanting them to win, yeah, that's definitely mm -hmm. a sort of tension, you know. But, of course, that's okay. sort of a, a mass manifestation because there's yeah. so many people involved. Yeah. So it doesn't yeah. matter either, <laughs> you know, going to get what you want there. But, yeah, I mean, excitement is a very, very good form of tension. Um, okay. For sure, and that's in any kind of form. You know, if you're looking forward to like a vacation or something, you know, mm -hmm. and think about it nonstop, that's definitely a form of tension. Um, mm -hmm. Anything like that, you know what I mean? So it's it's definitely mm -hmm. very important. But um, yeah, Your well, attention okay. is, yeah. Justin, did you <clears throat> read that post? Which which post? Yeah, the uh, tension one from yesterday. Structural tension. I've read, yeah, I did. I've read several of your posts. Yeah, it's um, called like contention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read it and commented yeah. on it. I sure did because I, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yesterday was a full day, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I read it, um, and uh, I think I made some comments on it. It was, it was. I don't um, you commenting, but. Say what? I don't yeah, recall you many, commenting. Yeah. You commented on the uh, support yeah. call from last week. I don't recall you commenting on it. Did I? Maybe I did. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, it's blending together, man. <laughs> uh, I worked out yesterday morning, too. Yeah. I worked out and went to work yesterday and read. Yeah. I will reread it because maybe maybe I read something else. <laughs> you did talk about it last week. Oh. You did talk about it last week a bit, so it's, you know, you might be remembering that. But, um, maybe I read something. Maybe I maybe that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, um, that's I'm sorry, Cope, go ahead. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. you're right. I think I did screw up. I think I, I'm wrong, actually. Yeah. Cope, what were you trying to say? That happens so rarely. <laughs> go ahead, Cope. Yeah, this is Cope. Um, the, uh, the article on tension and the last three articles, or the last four articles in a row, really create a, a very strong tie-in to everything that we're doing. The law of attraction. Right. Now, see, the law of attraction is interesting. I, it, my whole take on it is called the law of assumption, because right. that's what we do in our, in our whole being. Because as the more you believe, the more you experience, and mm -hmm. you you're you're assuming whatever you're being. Right. I really like. Also, the fact that you haven't left accepting the reality part because it yes, always got important. me how you were supposed to, supposed to act like or talk like you've already got it. Live like, right? It's, it's, it's sort of. Like, it's a, I mean, I mean, say? the only way I, I could like to do that would be to in meditation imagine you were giving out money you didn't have, and that works too. Because I read that in a Wayne Dyer book, but still, it was always kind of like, okay, I just never did that. I was just always like, you know, yeah, it I felt mean, fake. I'm just happy you no, don't do that because it feels yeah. fake and just it like, does. but I don't mind going, hey, but I'm working towards it. You know what I mean? Right, exactly. Yeah. I guess I'm missing out. I guess I somehow, but I missed that whole part, Justin, the beginning when you said, I'm so glad you don't. Oh, okay. I was just saying, I'm so glad he hasn't left 
accepting the reality as it is, the radical right. acceptance, oh, the mindfulness yes. aspect, yeah. and then just go, okay, it's right. And then you can start <clears throat> working right. for it, you know, whether you use the slow hermit path where you slowly get your resistance out of the way or whether you yeah. decide to push through resistance, but at least you're you're using the reality as it is. You're not trying to go, oh, I've already got it. It's like, well, I you wanna, know, living like right. you've already got something you don't have. It's just, Right. I want to address, um, because it's two totally different topics, so we'll get to both of them. I want to address what Cope said first, and then we'll get to what Justin said. So, Cope, I think what you were saying, assuming the state of the goal, so I think what you mean is sort of like embodying it, embodying that um, frequency, as you might call it, or, you know, taking on the state of the goal. Is that what you mean? Yes, Okay. Because it's both, you know, everything you call the law of attraction is conscious right. and unconscious. So it's it's whatever, whatever the strength of what we're doing unconsciously or consciously. Right. And, and I think, Cope, um, I'm sorry, tell, tell me if I, I know, um, tell me if I'm speaking loud enough that you can understand me. Okay. I just want to make sure that you're able to um, understand. But I, I think you'll like what I'm going to talk about Thursday in my next post because actually it's the same thing you just said, uh, allowing your goals to basically transform you. Because when you're working on a goal, and I'm sure others here who have successfully manifested, especially with big things, big things that are excite really exciting to you, not so much with small things, but right. when you're working towards a really big thing a really big goal okay it feels it, it's transforming you it turns you into the type of person who can receive that goal by basically eliminating everything that's not a match to it you know it's it, it's a process of of transformation it's, a, it's almost an alchemical process if you will do you know what i mean yes. So yes. I definitely agree with what you're saying. Um, there's a, a wonderful quote. I don't know if you know this one by um, Michelangelo about you know the carver of the of the stone that you know in right. how does it go like in the in the stone the carver has to see what he wants to create and remove everything that doesn't belong to that picture basically. Right. It's a yeah. wonderful quote, and it's so true to the law of attraction, to creation, because <clears throat> you know it's all it's all about um, it's okay it's all about becoming your goal. It's you know when I took that um, in the post I mentioned the law of the, the hypnosis and the law of attraction class I took last year. And the instructor of that course said, basically, take on that goal with every cell of your being. Like, totally what is that scratching noise? noise. Yeah, I, I heard sure. that too. I think it's on Justin's end, I'm assuming. I don't know. Oh, sorry about that. I'm trying to get something to... That's all right. <laughs> yeah, it's really loud. <laughs> yeah. Oops, I, I was getting some ice. Oh, that's a problem. But, mm, that um, was nice. But the instructor said, take on your goal, the feeling of your goal, with every cell of your being. You know, if there's any part of you that isn't in alignment with that goal, you have to totally accept, you know, and, and let go of that. And no. let that goal enter every part of you, every part of like, your being. Like Neville Goddard, assume the wish, assume the right. feeling of the wish fulfilled. Right, you right, know. right, right. Yeah, Neville's a really good... And, yeah. What about the the resistance that could tear you apart? <laughs> uh, if, I mean, that's I mean, a big one. It is. It is a really big yeah. one. And that's why you remember the uh, the three qualities of any goal. It has to be, you know, inspiring, believable, right. and yet challenging. And if it's yeah, too remember, challenging, those are the three. yeah, yeah, if I remember. If it's too challenging, yeah, it's it's gonna really play havoc. Now. You have to have a balance. When I was reading that Path of Least Resistance book by um, what's his name, uh, Christine, what's the guy's name? I'm having Robert Fritz. Robert, uh, Fritz. Robert Fritz. Robert what? Robert Fritz. Fritz. Yeah. F R I T Z. Yeah. I was having a brain freeze. Um, it's not a brain freeze. Oh, whatever. 
I want to, I don't like the other term for it. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, he says, don't choose your goal based on whether it seems possible. You know, some, do you want to go get that? I don't know what it is. Go get it if you want to. Sorry. No? Um, he says, don't choose your goal based on what seems possible. You know, if something, if something seems impossible to you, don't deny that you want to create it. You know, like he gave an example of, um, he was doing a workshop once and there was an elderly lady there and she was having a lot of trouble with her desire. And, and he said, what is it you want? She's like, no, I can't say it. It's, it's, it can't happen. So why, why say it? He said, well, just tell me what it is you want. You know, you have to admit it. And she, and she argued for, well, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. It's too hard. It's not possible. And yeah. he said, just tell me what is it? Because until you admit it, that energy's stuck. And she said, cause she was really sick. I don't know what all these problems she had, but she was, you know, really elderly. So, but she said, I want health, you know, and that's what she wanted. But just by saying that, admitting what it was she wanted, it sort of freed that energy for her, and she almost felt better as a result of admitting what she wanted. So, you know, it does have to be believable, but don't be afraid to kind of go beyond what you can, <laughs> a little beyond what you can imagine. You know, stretch the bounds a little bit. You know what I mean? It, I think it seems like you want to try to get it just where it's just out of reach. Just out you're of like, reach. That's perfect. Like where you're like, you know, I could, I really don't know how it's going to happen, but it's just sort of possible that it could. And that's the kind of, you know, goal that you, that might be a good one to where you, you, you could, you could uh, work with that one for a while. Right. Yeah. And, you know, your goal, now here's the thing, um, you know, that sort of goes against what a lot of people say about the law of attraction. Your goal should sort of require something of you. What and I don't, how can I explain mm. it? What I mean by that, it shouldn't, if it's too easy, it's going to be boring, right? If it's like a oh, parking space here, $20 there. <laughs> eh, okay, fine. Well, that $20 can be a first stepping stone. For yes. people who haven't gotten that far like, yet. Like, imagine, uh, imagine something that's just like totally, like you can think it right now and get it in ten minutes, and it's just ah, okay. You know, it's like if if you stick to those, fine. It's sort of, sort of cool, but it's sort of boring. Well, if you stick to them, yeah. You know, and so your goal shouldn't feel. This is this is like totally. Um, almost heretical. <laughs> it's just, it's just, no, I, I agree with you. Are you equating a goal with an end result? Are you equating occupying a state of a person who already has everything they chose to fully enjoy experiencing and just assuming that their weight and need is over? Uh, well, that's definitely part of the process is assuming that state, yes. But what I'm saying is that the desire you have shouldn't always be something that's easily accessible. Who is that? My mom. She just she doesn't want me going down there. It's too bad. Uh, so she's going to take the garbage out for me. Okay. Um, your, your goal, your desire shouldn't always be totally easily accessible. It shouldn't be like, oh, yeah, I can imagine that right now. It should require a little bit of um, of work, of alignment, of inner work. I don't mean outer work. It should require a little bit of inner work to get to that are you place. Saying, are you saying our desire should be our intent, our choice? Well, it should always be a choice, yes. So imagine, you know, when you when you think of your desire for the first time, Honestly, to me, it should be a little bit, a little bit scary, a little bit like, can, mm. I, can I really do this? A bit of a journey. Yeah. I mean, that's just me. Challenging. I mean, this is the magus path. Mm. I mean, you know, this is the active path. It should be a little bit terrifying. <laughs> like, yeah, I, that's why you call I usually, it go. Right. Go ahead, yeah. Justin. I usually go, you know, yeah, it's like. Can this happen? 
you know, to me, if, if I'm not thinking at some point, can this happen? How is this going to happen? Then right. it's probably not a goal that, that's, it's probably too easy a goal. Exactly. And then I have to go and walk in, okay, and speed up, you know, then you can allow it to fall into your lap and you can sort of speed up the, the energy as you want. Right. Right. That's yeah. annoying. It's, it's definitely a process of alignment. You know, it shouldn't be just, let me think about it today, and, oh, yeah, this will be easy. You know, and you will have some like that. I'm not saying every, you know, every goal is going to be real hard. What I'm saying is a really enjoyable goal is not always super easy. In fact, some goals might be really hard. You know, when, okay, I'm a programmer as well as, you know, a coach, and when I've, had a wonderful idea in the past for a program. This is kind of the creative process here. A lot of times I was, I'd be like, I have no idea how I'm going to carry this out. I have no idea how I'm going to do it. But it's such a driving force, this idea, that I have to. I can't not do it. It's not because I need it. It's not because, you know, it's just I have to do it. And then I do it and I, I, I succeed nine times out of ten. You know, it had to be something that really drove me forward and really excited me, but yet was sort of a little scary because I didn't know how I would accomplish it. You know, because I, I mean, I'm a good programmer, but, you know, certain things are sort of uh, difficult. So that's what I think a goal ideally should be like, you know, just sort of, you know. It's, are you guys getting static? I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, someone, one of the phone uh, yeah, somebody's has, phone. Uh, I don't know who, but uh, that's okay. But um, I can probably check actually. But anyway, you know, it's um, it should be a little bit scary. You know, it shouldn't be totally easy right away, and that's okay. Your your goal should excuse my cuckoo clock. Um, your, and Justin's uh, talking watch. Um, <laughs> It's blind central. And your clock. Mm. And my clock. I said that first. Excuse my cuckoo clock and Justin's talking watch. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, your goal should transform you. It should be it, – it should have to kind of change you from, from within, right? So that's – to me, that's what a good goal should be. Do, does that make sense, everyone? Does that, everyone kind of <laughs> yes. Yeah, it should that? be. Yeah, it does. It should be kind of – yeah. So. Right. It shouldn't be totally easy. And I think, you know, when you really choose a goal that sort of scares you a little bit, it sort of feels not immediately accessible to you, then it's a journey. Then it really sets up that tension because it's like, all right, I really want this and I'm really going to work towards it. And, you know, that's, that's how it's going to be. But I don't know how I'm going to get there right now. That's okay. You have to be comfortable with the unknown. I think that's really extremely important. Get comfortable with the unknown because you won't always know how you're going to get there. Right? So that's, I think that's super mm -hmm. important. Make sense? Yeah. So, okay. So, yeah, it's definitely one of the callers. It's going to tell me which one that has the static. Anyway, so um, moving on to Justin's point, I, I wrote it down. Yeah. Okay, can you act like you already? You said about acting like you already have your goal, right, Justin? So. Yeah, um, yeah I just like. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I think that um, you're right. You totally have to make peace with what is. I mean, it has to be one of the first parts. You know, that was the first step of the original three step process I talked about. Like, last year, you know, end of last year, early this year. Um, you definitely have to do that. And I, I've, I've always said that don't act as if, but feel as if. You yeah. Know, action, and you guys who took the Art of Reality Creation class will remember this. Action, I think our static person left. Action is, um, what, the fifth stage of the progression of the manifestation. Do you remember that, Justin? Mm-hmm. And Rhea? Yeah. yeah the... it's, it's the fifth stage. Action is. So 
you have a lot of stuff before action. You know, you have a lot of alignment. You have a lot of visualization. You have a lot of letting go. You, you know, you have four steps, four stages before you even get to the place of action. And that's why most of the clients I work with, I'll have them totally halt action. Hello, whoever just connected. Um, it's worse. Um, but I'll have them, you know, uh, totally stop action for a while. And then once they're really aligned, then they can start up action again. But, you know, action, you can't act as if before you're really ready to, right? So I mm -hmm. totally agree with that. Yeah, ma <clears throat> making peace with what is is definitely um, probably one of the most important parts of that. And did you have anything else? Hello? Hello, is that Brenda? Hello? Someone's connected, but I think it's Brenda. Hello, I heard that. Yeah, me too. I don't know if she can hear us, though. All right. Try and reconnect, whoever that was. Yeah, I don't. I can't from my end because they're a caller. But, um, Justin, did you have anything else to add to that? I don't know if I fully covered your point. No, I just like how you, how it, you know, it, it's a little different than what most of them are. You should just sort of act it already. It is like you, you can't. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I um, I got a comment on yesterday's post from someone who basically said, you know, I've tried before, totally believing it, and I really did believe it, and it didn't happen. And I said, well, were you, you know, were you focused on having this goal? Were you focused on trying to avoid not having it? That's a really important point. Does that make sense? Are you focused on having uh -huh. it, or are you focused <clears throat> on avoiding not having it? Okay. Yeah. Because the 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 former is good. That's you're you're you have the tension. You have it's driving you towards your goal. You're all good. The latter, where you're avoiding not having it, is a problem orientation. Right, and yeah, you know it is. And you're not making peace with what is. You're not allowing. Same thing with um. I've I've been replying to these posts on Reddit on this Law of Attraction subreddit, and um, there was someone who said basically, you know, they were they were trying to get a job. This 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 one person, and I think it's a he. I'm just gonna assume. I don't know. He said um. You know, I felt, and he was even really big into Neville, you know, into Neville. Do you know who De Neville Goddard or however you pronounce his name? Um, I've heard of the name. Yeah. Anyway, you know, he was really big into him too. And he, and he said, you know, I tried focusing. I felt really good about the job, you know, and I don't understand why I got rejected. And I said, did you feel like you needed to have it? Well, yes, I don't like where I am right now. Well, that's it. <laughs> yeah it can't be an escape it can't be and i'll talk about this this saturday for those of who will be there it can't be an escape it can't be you know something that you are trying to get out of where you are you know you can't be running yeah. away from you have to be running towards something you can't be trying to escape so yeah you definitely you must must absolutely make peace with what is and only then can you truly start moving towards, you know, what it is you want. Um, so, mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, Fran. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, so in other words, because um, at first I was thinking, uh, doesn't that raise the possibility of being so um, relentless towards that goal um, uh -huh. that you are not in, you know, you're not in the present, you know, you become uh, not present. Uh, but, so I'm, I'm just wondering about that. Could that possibly pull you away from the present? Because you're so, um, uh, you know, it's so very specific and you're so focused on it. Well, look, Hello? yeah, no, I was waiting for you to be done before you answered. Um, I'm not a proponent of you need to always live in the present. I mean, 
what if you have a positive childhood memory that you want to think about, you know? Uh, no, I'm not, I don't mean that kind of present. Well, I mean mindful, cool. just present. be in the present, you know, uh, because well, in the moment. be in your body, grounded, you know, sort of like, but still be So able define to. what you mean by the present then, because that's, yeah, what is, to, to uh, me, the present means I'm only focused on this moment, and I think that's what most people mean when they say live in the present. If you don't mean that, can you define? I guess, I guess you're right, yeah, okay. Well, no, I mean... I mean, you, energetically, if you're not grounded, your energies will scatter, yes, right. once you're done meditating. You won't get your manifestations nearly as fast, right. because if you do everything right, but you don't ground, you it just, it doesn't work. Exactly. It doesn't. Right. So if that's what you mean... I think... Uh, I don't know what I mean. Do, do you have a clear, I mean, if you have a clarification, I don't mean to, like, put you down. If you have a clarification, that, that's what I'm asking for. Do you... Do you do you have a specific meaning for what it means to live in the present? Uh, no, it's okay. okay. No, it's fine. Right. I think so, uh, I think what she mean, what I understood is like uh, Brandon. Like normally, most of the people who start law of attraction is present is whatever is happening right now. I mean, whatever my life is day to day. Mm-hmm. You know, suppose if I. I I want to be um, uh, suppose I'm working now and I want to have my own business, mm-hmm. but I cannot forget that I'm working right now. I think that's what Pran means. Like whatever my current reality with everything, you know, my day yeah. from the morning. Is that what you mean, Pran? Kind of. Yeah. I mean, still yeah. have that. Uh-huh. Still have that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that goal, but yeah. not so that you're always in that goal. And then you forget oh, okay. where you are, and what, you know. Yeah. Again, you know, here's the thing. I'm oh, not, okay. I'm not a proponent of you always have to live in the present. That's sort of a, you know, a feel-good statement, a platitude that's always kind of thrown around in the spiritual community. I'm not for that. Um, now, it's a good way of overcoming resistance, you know, being in the present. But here's, I mean, basically, the law of attraction is a shift of paradigm, right? The, the, mm-hmm. the usual um, the usual paradigm is observe current reality and re- respond emotionally to current reality based on your judgments. Okay, if I don't like where I am, well, I hate it and there's not much I can do about it because that's what's here right now, right? And now a lot of people will – and here's what I think people mean when they say live in the present. People will escape that. They'll say, I hate my job, so I'm going to go and I'm going to, you know – drink or I'm gonna you know gamble or I'm gonna you know do these other things that you know kind of drown it out and not face what's here now and so people say yeah live in the present be here with what's here right now whatever but the law of attraction or or creation or magic whatever you want to call it is sort of a different answer it said you know the paradigm is totally reversed where instead of how do you make peace how do you make peace with what is? Let me let me finish what I'm saying first. Sorry. The paradigm is totally reversed because instead of you know observe current reality, feel bad about current reality, uh, that's that's giving power to the circumstances. Instead of that, you choose what you want to create, which by definition doesn't mm-hmm. exist. Which by definition means you're not living in the present. Because you're, if you're living in the present, you can only focus on what's in the present. So this job I don't like, you know, this relationship that isn't healthy, whatever. You can only focus on what's here if you're in the present. But the law of attraction, by definition, asks you to focus not in the present, but in a positive way that's going to create something new. Now, that doesn't mean to totally live in la-la land and always be daydreaming. And that's that's another form – that's just another form of escape. I guess that's what I was – I guess maybe that's what I – Right. Thinking. That's just another form of escape that the first type of person that I'm talking about is going to do. The creator, the deliberate creator, is going to focus on what he or she wants to create and, you know, truly put their focus there and, you know, acknowledge what current reality is, obviously, but they're going to be creating a state within themselves that is not currently rooted in current reality. And that is what sets up 
structural tension. If your inner state is always a match to, inner, to current reality, which would be living in the present moment, you're never going to get anything new. Okay, you're going to get more of, of what you've gotten, and, and that's, you know, some good, some bad. If, if you choose your inner state, if you choose what your focus is, and then, you know, outer reality, current reality has to shift because it, ha it has to be a mirror of what's going on in here, you know, so that's creation. Okay, so no, I, you know, I think living in the present is sort of an answer to that escapism that a lot of people do, but it's not necessarily the only answer nor the best answer. I think, you know, the, the creation-based answer is, what do you want to create? Stop focusing on the circumstances. What do you want to create with your life? Not because of getting out of your current situation, not because of, you know, limitation or because of need or anything else, but just for its own sake, what do you want to create? And that's where your focus is going to be. Does that... Kind of clarify things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Barry, one more thing you told in the past, like not to react. No right. Matter like you know, try your you know not try not to react. So, exactly. You know, yeah, and 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 just focus on okay, fine. I mean, uh, don't act out of your habits if you can control them. Then pretty much things will be changing faster. I think. Right. Yeah, you can't, you can't react to current reality because that is just giving power back to the circumstances. You have to take oh. that power. You have to become the creator and be the one that is going to, you know, uh, determine. Remember, um, make your goal non-negotiable. Determine what you will create, what's going to be part of your reality. And that's your job, only your job. You, know, you can't give that power to outside circumstances, mm -hmm. right? Um, does that answer your question about you were asking about making peace with what is? Did you have a question about that? Well, yeah, that was involved. I was going to ask, you know, the radical acceptance and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got it. I guess I got a little mixed up with it all. Like, how did it fit in with, um, you know, making peace with what is and radical acceptance and. Um, and that, for some reason, I I linked it, uh, mindfulness in with it. <laughs> so, right. so, yeah, so, I, yeah. It's, you know, um, it's always a balance. You know, some people get sort of locked into this place of always releasing, releasing, releasing. You know, I have to keep releasing so I can get to the place I want to be and, you know, let go of all this past resistance and limiting beliefs. And... and I find that it just keeps them in the cycle of continuing to release, continuing, you know, whether they use tapping or whether they use... I know someone like that. Yeah, do you? I do, I do. I even heard, I was even, my, I uh, was even, someone else even uh, found an article on it. But I do know someone in person like that. Really? I've never met him. I've only talked to him on the phone, but I've never met him. I've never met him. I've never met him. Huh. Yeah, that's, um, I, I think I saw someone, I don't know if it was in the comments or in Reddit or where it was, but someone recently said that, where they were, um, you know, they said, I'm just, I'm, I keep releasing resistance and I hope I get there soon. I'm like, you're, you're, you're just sort of screaming the <laughs> wheels. You know what I mean? If you're just going to use this <laughs> That's what you're, you're just what you say you are? Spinning your you're wheels. What? Spinning your wheels. Yeah. They're releasing, clearing, and in, they're releasing, clearing, and integrating. That's, that's right. That's what it, it is. You know, it's it gets unhealthy after a while. It's like, okay, well, the only thing that can move you forward is is that tension that's going to pull you towards your goal, and releasing is part of that. You know. It's it's a part of that process, but it's not in and of itself something to keep focusing on day in day out. You know what I mean? Like that's it. it it's it has the tendency to get keep you stuck there, right? So it's yeah. I much more highly recommend focusing on your goal and then letting that transform you in such a way that it it forces you to face the stuff that's not in alignment with that goal. So you know, you're going to naturally release all that stuff. You know, if, if you, I guarantee if you have a belief about, about being poor, 
and then you suddenly have a goal of making, you know, a thousand dollars more a month, I guarantee that belief is going to be challenged. I, you know, I guarantee it because the goal requires it of you. That's what I mean about goals requiring things of us. That goal requires of you that you face that belief, that you face that resistance. And that's where the radical acceptance comes in in the mindfulness, where you say, you know what? My goal is more important than that belief. And I will, I will show that, I will demonstrate that by not reacting to it emotionally through mindfulness, through radical acceptance, whatever. But you don't just sit here 24 hours a day or, you know, even an hour or whatever and just release, 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 release. You don't just do that unless you are totally in a problem-oriented state and you can't do anything else. That's really the only, you know, sometimes you have to, sometimes it takes a bit of um, transitional time to switch from, you know, problem-based to creative-based, you know what I mean? So that's 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 one case you might be able to, but it's just you really have to know when to stop. Right. Right. So does that answer your question, Fran? What, yeah. what kind of state? What what state did you say you had to be in to do that? I missed that. If if you're in a really problem oriented state where you're just really okay. super okay. focused on your problems, then take out some time, but don't make it a goal in and of itself. I got to get yeah, rid of all of goal. my all of my limiting beliefs about money, you know? Oh, my God. No, I'm sorry. It's not going to work. You know, your goal will do that for no. you. Your goal will do that for you. But, you know, if you are in a really, really anxious or negative state, then yeah, take a few minutes, enter the zero state. That's why that's there. Enter the zero state. You know, get out of that, that frame of problem-based focus, and then, you know, you can start moving towards your goal, but you, you know, just, just don't make it a goal in itself. Right. Right. Oh. So, yeah. Uh, and that answers your question, mm -hmm. Fran. Yes. Thank okay. you. Other th thoughts or questions right now based on this or anything else? Um, what I was going to mention so we talked about, let's see, goals transforming you. That'll be Thursday's topic. One thing that I kind of, it snuck up on me a little bit. I just realized this the other day. I was, and I think this really illustrates the difference between, you know, the hermit path and the magus path. If, if someone's listening to this and they don't know what those two paths are, you want to see my post about the active versus path, passive mm -hmm. path to manifesting. Mm -hmm. um, but I was... You know, this is a couple months ago, a month or two ago, and I was kind of asking, you know, the gods of the universe, um, okay, I, I, I'm pretty confident on how to pretty much get a manifestation right around my vibrational range, right? I mean, you know, my comfort level. I'm pretty good with that. How do I take it to the next level? How do I get those bigger manifestations. Now, I know, you know, like Abraham will say, there's no such thing as a big manifestation. It's all the mm. same. Like, it's no harder to create a castle and a button and all that kind of stuff. But um, that is just about no one's experience. I mean, most people... Now, yes, technically, you know, the process is the same pretty much. The, you know, the, the mechanics of it are the same. But it's just not because you're just not in alignment with that. I mean... It, if mm. if you're in one place, if you're you know um, making minimum wage, let's say it's not just as easy easy to become a billionaire overnight. It's it's not as easy as something you know believable to you, right? <clears throat> so True. my question to the universe was, let's say I'm making such and such a month. You know, I just like I said, I focus a lot of money goals. Cause that's Kind of very, very easy to quantify, right? You know, so let's say I'm making such and such a month, and I want to really go to the next level, not just a little bit, not not by something that's just sort of, you know, a little higher but still pretty believable. I really want to take it to the next level. How would I do that, right? So that was my question to the universe, and I sort of dropped it and and moved on, and you know that kind of stuff. And I realized I was looking back a few days ago. And I realized, oh, that was answered. 
just through just, <laughs> just through my experiences in the last month or so. That was that was sort of answered, and that's what I've been focusing on. I'll, again, I'll write a specific post about this probably in a couple of weeks. But just in my specific experiences lately, you know that it was answered in a really clear way for me. Now I'll get your thoughts on it first. What do you think the differences are? between manifesting something that's pretty much at your level already, maybe a little bit of work, you know, required, but not much, versus something that really requires something new of you, something that's the next level. What do you think the difference is? If anyone wants to volunteer with that. Um, oh. I'd, have ahead, to say, I'd have to say it's your resistance level. Okay. Like, you're not going to have much of a resistance level at something a little bit higher than where you are, but right. something major step forward, you would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Justin, you were going to talk? Uh, well, resistance, sometimes it's the, not even so much the resistance, but the, oh, wow, that's actually possible. Right. Like, sometimes you don't know it possible. I know that sounds strange, but it's like, man, you didn't even know you could do something like that. And um, right. the other one would be faith. Would faith, you said? Yeah, faith. Right, yeah. Yeah, um, that's a really good one. You know, it's sort of, um, I'll get to my specific answer for that, but I have one too. Oh, go ahead. Um, for me, like, Things that are really easy to manifest, you don't really try to. Like, right. it just, you don't even put any effort. But the ones that are harder, you have to put more effort or more attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Christine actually has the answer. <laughs> I disagree with Abraham Hicks. I do too. It does take more eldritch power. It does. Because it you're does. not in alignment, and you've got to pull more of the universal it does. energy together to, right. to gather more of the physical resources. In right. your reach, right? But I mean, the, yeah. you can say the process is almost the same, but you you know, but it's more, it's yeah, a little different. He was actually right on, and I'll explain that in a second. What I do want to say is, um, I wish I remember what book this was in. It was such a good one, but it was something like the author said: the reason you don't get more than you do is because you don't you don't conceive of getting more than you do. You don't expand your it, mind into what is possible. Brandon, is it is it your self image about yourself that mm -hmm. like you know you can actually I can have that. I mean I deserve or I you know I'm worthy of it. Is that belief sometimes is hard to change because uh, I think when it comes to especially money, mm -hmm. it's 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 hard for people, oh, I can have that much amount of money, you know. It's hard for them to digest that thing first. So is it yeah. something to do with our self-image? Like, I, right. it, yeah, it, I can it have can, it. Anyway. It can be. I mean, definitely, you know, as you start to hit these higher levels to you, uh -huh. it will hit mm -hmm. your, your, your beliefs harder. Yes. So, uh -huh. But it doesn't have to be... It, it doesn't have to be a huge thing. You don't have to make it like this, I have to feel worthy. I have to feel like I deserve it. It, it just It's the same mm -hmm. thing. You just have to not give it attention. You don't mm -hmm. have to build up feeling deserving. You mm -hmm. just have to stop feeling undeserving. Does that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You don't have to like, you don't need you just to gotta feel like you can have it. You don't need fake mm -hmm. self-esteem. You don't need like, I'm so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need that. You just need to not yeah. respond when your subconscious yeah. says, "Oh mm -hmm. wait, can I, mm -hmm. can I have, can I have that?" Like I've, I've been, you know, my, my, um, my money. I've been working on money for the last two months. October was fine. It was pretty, pretty easily in reach. November was harder. It was out. It was more out of reach, but I did it. But my and here's the amazing thing. My my work last month in November for that goal that seemed out of, a bit out of reach set up new structures that actually ensured greater prosperity in the future. 
Okay. <laughs> like this, and I, I don't like to give specific numbers. It's just because it doesn't matter. But this month, it's the 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 thirteenth. Yeah. Yeah. And right. Yeah. Yes. And we are already to like we've already exceeded what we made in the ent- entirety of last month. Now that's pretty amazing cool. to me, right? Yeah. Because the work okay. last month set up the structure of, oh, wait, I can do that. Now, when I was working on that, my, you bet my subconscious was like, can I have that? And it was sort of, okay, well, I'm just going to not respond to that. Like this, that's that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not going to respond to that. And then by default, you will shift to where you need to be. You don't need to build up feeling worthy and feeling deserving. And just, just Holy crap, I didn't realize I do that a lot. What's that? Just not respond to stuff. Just I don't even. Respond. Just don't. Just be like. I, I just was like. Just... Mm. What's that? I do that a lot. I didn't really. I just really just walk the path. I don't even. Right. I know. I, 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 I should be able to have it because I mean, why not? It's there. Right. You know, exactly. Most things. I don't do that with everything. You know who does? But most things are just kind of well, like. Oh, okay. yeah. My yeah. my my goal, and I hey, well, absolutely not even Christine knows my Christine doesn't even know my goals till I achieve it. My goal this month. Yeah, I don't want to know. <laughs> my goal this <laughs> month. Is one of those, oh my god, it's scary. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Did you really, really? Mm-hmm. It's scary, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Did I really, really? Okay, good. <laughs> she wants you to be frightened. And she wants you to frighten, yeah. Yep. It's, 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 it's easier for her to control me that way. No, just <laughs> but, um, you know, my goal this month is really frightening, but, you know, when I first thought about it, I actually couldn't really get excited about it because it was so. It's like, I, I can't get there. And then once it's I started, the, what's that, Justin? What uh, I think it's, yeah, it is the 13th. Is it the yeah. 13th? yeah, it is. I know it is for yeah, sure. Yeah, it's the 13th. I'm it's the positive 13th. it's the 13th. Thir- yes, it's the 13th. I'm looking right at it birthday. on my computer. You're established it's the 13th. It's one of my friend's <clears throat> birthdays. It's the 13th. Oh, there you go. I was going to tell you that. You oh. wouldn't listen. Repent. <laughs> You're most certainly better. Anyway, um, but at first I'm like I can't even get to that state. But you know what helped you art of reality creation people is the uh, journaling process. You know, oh I have to tell you my experience. Okay, I told you about. Do mm-hmm. everyone remember about journaling? Yes. Yeah. I don't. Why do I not remember? That? I'd like to know more I about it. That. I've been there that day, actually. Were you there in the last? Yeah, class? I remember the journaling. I'd like to know about. Yeah. A I remember bit. Too, yeah. So last like, last month I about. right last month I journaled almost every day, and yesterday I actually I kind of didn't journal too much yet this month at all, but uh-huh. yesterday I'm like, you know what I need to journal because I'm just not able to get in the state right now. I need to journal. So what do you what when you're journaling like well probably everybody knows already so I don't want you to have to go back over it what well I've never really journaled and I want to right and for some reason I, like I can't either. well let me I, let me I, tell I, you my experience and you can ask your question I just want to get okay. I had this amazing experience. So yesterday I went back to journal and I had to, I have a, a journal file because it's in notes. The Mac computer has a notes application. You can create notes and I have a note file for each goal. Right. And then like I create, like I put the day's date when I create the journal entry and then, you know, I write. So yesterday I went back and I created a new, a new goal. I'm like, Oh my God, I, I actually, I achieved last month's goal. So let's go back. I went back to, um, you know, manifest however much money in, you know, per month was my goal last month. So I went back and I went, I read my last entry and literally my last entry was the, the, the day before I reached my goal. And I was talking all about how I, you know, was making that much money and all that kind of stuff. And so I put a new entry in. This is so, this is like the completion part of that process. I put a new entry in dated September or 
September, December 13th, because it was after midnight last night, December 13th, and I said, I achieved this goal on 11-30. I achieved this goal on November 30th. And that felt so good to put in there, I achieved this goal that I've been journaling about all month. <laughs> that, that felt really good. Like that, that completion, you're bringing it back around. Like everything else was sort of like, you know, it, it's false. Like you're, you're writing as though you're already there. So it's sort of like, you know, but this statement was the one thing that was, I, I reached it. I got there. Right. And it, it, it lets me complete that energy. And then I created the new file and I started my new goal. But um, I wanted to, let's see, Fran, what was your question about journaling? Oh, when you're journaling, are you writing like you're already there with yes. the goal that you've got? The Absolutely, goal? yes. Okay. And that's what I'm saying. I wasn't able to reach that goal state, that vibrational signature, you know, before I journaled. Once I journaled, I was like, oh yeah, I have it, mm. and I just basked in that. It was awesome, you know. And now it's more accessible, right? <clears throat> so, journaling, writing stuff that that can really help to you know, get you in that place. You, know? you put in all the details, like, of the Yeah, well, I, I make up details. Yeah. Yesterday, someone signed up for this. He and... tells a, remember he said he tells a story yeah. about, I mean, he, uh, he tells a story about right. the goal. So it would be like, um, yeah. you know, hey, today I went to, you know, whatever restaurant it was and spent however much money, exactly. even though you didn't do it. Right. You, you mm -hmm. get you get the feeling, and then you let the feeling tell the story. Right. And it's as if you have yeah, the money. Is that... yeah, I've never. Go ahead, Ria. Oh. No, you you. Right. I think your term you use for that is a, your pre preferred reality story. Is that you right. mentioned? You tell the, you tell the story yeah. of how you would like things to be, and you just sort of make details. Yeah. Fran, go back. I think that was in the art of reality creation. Go back to the third class. It's right near the end, and. and is, yeah. it, is it the art of reality creation or is it the effortless money manifestation? I don't remember which. Can't I was oh, at the art of reality. Oh, it, You're right. It was the effortless money manifestation. I think it's the money one. Yeah, it's the money one. Go back to the third class of the okay. effortless money manifestation. It'll be okay. in that class. And okay. it's it's one of the techniques I mentioned. I yeah, because I remember the journalist. Yeah, I never really have. I I like you know, and you don't have to. If visualization works for you, affirmations, journaling. Just yeah, journaling's cool, man. Journaling makes it more real for me. It makes it just like, yeah. It, it's like, you know, it, it just makes it more real. You know what I mean? It just, it's just. Yeah, like, no, you know. journaling is actually really cool because a lot of people swear by it. It's oh, a yeah. great technique. And so is um, uh, so because yeah, yeah, it, it's really good. I can't. I know I've read about it in other books. Right. Oh, I love it. I love journaling. So, uh, yeah, that's a really good process for me. But you have to figure out what works for you, what makes it more real and more realistic to you. You know what I mean? Anyway, so going back to um, – I was asking what makes – what's the difference between a, a, a believable small manifestation and a big next-level manifestation? Okay, and, and everyone's answers was really good. But – You know what? I'll straight lie to you guys. I have journaled before. I'm yeah, sorry. I, I forgot about those few times. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's good. I do use it sometimes. I just sort of forgot that I use it. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> so I realized the difference, okay? So one of the paths is the hermit path, right? The hermit path is all about letting go, you know, Making peace with what is just important in both paths, but it's definitely emphasized in the hermit path. Um, allowing, you know, just kind of letting things flow, right? Not like being detached from your goal, especially. And I find that the hermit path is great once you've reached the level you want to be at. Okay, it's great for remaining at your current level. Um, so, you know, if, if you are where you are, um, it's which you always are where you are. That was a stupid statement. <laughs> but it's it's great for you know continuing to manifest things at the current level or maybe a little bit above of where you are, where it doesn't require much of you. Right? Now the mm -hmm. the magus path is where, like you said, Justin, you put in that energy. You put in that energy 
to get to the next level. Now, so here's, when I took that Hypnosis and the Law of Attraction course last year, I'm sorry, I keep referring back, that, that was literally one of the most life-changing courses I've ever taken. It's, it was really most influential in my, you know, work with the Law of Attraction. I still refer back to it. But um, when I was taking that course, you know, the guy who, who led the course, his name is Joe Tabanella, um, he, he was talking about two different techniques. You know, one was demonstrated or illustrated by Genevieve Davis, whom I've talked about before. Um, she's more of the hermit path type of person. You might say, um, oh, I don't know who else might be there, but Genevieve Davis is a really good example. And the other one from Robert Fritz was illustrating the magus path, and he didn't call it that, but the, the more active path. Okay, what he said, you know, like Genevieve Davis, who wrote the book books about like becoming magic, and I don't remember the other names. Um, her thing was set it and forget it. Okay, so basically, think of your goal. You know, her one of her methods was writing a letter to the universe. You know, do your thing, ask for it, totally forget about it, and she says it'll come. Right now, Robert mm -hmm. Fritz is. Uh, method is all about focus, 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 work. You know, not not necessarily external work, although he's definitely a proponent of external work, but just aligning yourself and constantly having that tension driving you forward. That seems totally at odds at first, and that's you know kind of a great comparison of my Hermit path versus Hit Mega's path. What what this guy said who led that course was that, you know, Genevieve Davis, her method is great if you already have the structures in place to support that manifestation. Mm -hmm. If your subconscious mind is like, oh, hey, sure, fine, then that's great. You can think of it, and you can drop it, and I've done this. You know, like $20, $20 for me is like nothing. I can I can focus on it, and it's, it's you know, it's pretty much there. I can say, okay, I want, I don't usually specify the amount, but I'll, sometimes I'll say, I want, I want to receive money today. Okay. It's always 20. And it's usually, well, yesterday was, it was 40. I did yes. it yesterday. Yes. But, you know, it's, it's always like kind of a, at one time was a pretty big amount, but it's usually a, a pretty believable small amount, 20, yeah. 20, 40, sometimes 10, sometimes six, you know, it's like 60. Sometimes it, it's just sort of a, a believable small amount. And um, that's that's the, the, the hermit path. Just sort of say, okay, this is what I want to do. I'm going to let it go, not really think about it. That's it. But my subconscious structures are in place where I can do that, and it doesn't argue with me. It doesn't say, oh, that's not possible. It just, okay, cool. You know, and, and my being in the zero state will kind of support that, and that's cool. And, you know, you have a little bit of variation there. You can get a little bit higher with that because, you know, just being in the zero state naturally will raise you to a bit higher vibration. But it's not going to totally transform you like the other path will, Megas path. So the other path that he talked about and that I talk about now is where you set up that tension. And every day you know, one, two, three times a day, whatever you want to do, you go within, you focus on your goal, you get into that feeling state of the goal, you let the subconscious mind argue with you, you ignore it, <laughs> you know, radical acceptance, mindfulness, whatever, you told, you know, you just go deeper into your goal, mm -hmm. you do that every day, you set up that tension, you see where you are now, you see where you want to be, you see the differences, and as current reality shifts, you know, and then, you know, mm -hmm. you get there. That's the magus path. That's the active path. It is totally different. It's absolutely completely different than just set it and forget it. Can I can I say something? Yeah, please. There, I, I I would imagine what strikes me is that the magus path. You have to be careful about not letting it go into desperation, since you're focusing, 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 focusing. You know, like. Not you personally, but um, maybe one who is not right. quite ready or something. And, and that'll be one that of it the, could turn into a desperate kind of a thing. Right, and that'll be one of the essential keys I talk about this Saturday. 
Um, you know, yeah, you do have to make sure not in the problem orientation. You got to make sure, is this a need that I need to get out of the situation, or is it a, a, a pure creation? Okay, and I'll explain that. Because it's got to be creation. The gotta be creation. thing about that is, what we were, I know early, I know we've said, when you feel resi resistant, stop, release resistance, and restart your meditation. But what we're doing here would be when you fear resistance, you just keep going right. until you complete your meditation energetically right. and then release. Yeah. That's the difference. Right. Yeah, you just let that, it go. A lot of Yeah, say what? You just let it go. You just, you know, keep going deeper and deeper. Yeah, then you let it go. Right. So you don't you just don't even worry about because I don't know, that's what I did a lot of you don't even you just sort of ignore resistance, right. where some people would have to not ignore resistance. They would have to let their goal go and release the existence, the resistance, right. and then restart their meditation. That is the, the mystic path, the hermit path. Right. Your path, you, what you're doing, you just keep rolling until that yeah. resistance just doesn't let you go anymore mm -hmm. until you get to the end of your goal energetically. Right. Exactly. Yeah, that's a really good description. Yeah. And you can get really torn up, right, if you're not ready. Again, like I said earlier, your goal can and perhaps should be a bit scary. You know, it's not going to yeah, be Yeah, I mean, okay, straight up. Yeah, I mean, that's why you want to have your internal subconscious and right. um, mm. uh, right, not so, what, an unconscious, subconscious, and energetic structures ready to go. So... Fran, if you are at a spot and your resistance is too much, then stop the meditation on the, on the goal, back off, release your resistance, and, and then restart your meditation. Right. But if you can go through it and just ignore it, keep going until you reach your energetic end. Yes, yeah. I, I found that I can do that only when I uh, think about it, only the big goal, mm -hmm. um, when I'm in a zero state. And then let it go, and uh, and then I don't usually have the resistance because I'm coming from this. That's more the hermit path. And then I'm, yeah, I a lot of things are becoming clear. I think right. I'm still not ready for that magus path yet. Magus path, yeah, yeah. It's um, what I want to say, you know. But I will be. I will be sure. at some point. But this has cleared up a lot for me that because I, um, I'm already being torn up by. A bunch of resistance or well, something. Let me let me ask you a question. Kind of small. Let's go yeah. for everyone. Why on earth would someone choose to climb Mount Everest? This is not a. I mean, it's a metaphor, but it's just a challenge. Weird. Why would someone choose to why climb? Why Eric Weimer Everest? did it? Yeah. Why would you do it? Eric Weimer did it so he could be the first blind man that's ever done it. Oh, that's awesome. And it would be a challenge. You know what? I yeah. don't. He was actually. He did a speech at the National Convention. That's cool. Why would you do it? Do you do it so that – I don't even know what a problem-oriented perspective on that would be. <laughs> like, just just, just to, to, as a challenge. Right. You do it as – it's scary. That challenge is so it's, incredible that you never get out of problem-oriented. If, if you, you ever, just decide right. to do it. If you ever <laughs> talk to someone who wants mm -hmm. to climb Mount Everest and they're like, oh, yeah, it's going to be easy. They're not going to make it. <laughs> you, nah. Um, they're not going to make it. should be terrified. It's going to be easy. It's going to be easy. Brandon, you want to do it? Absolutely. Oh, it'll be fine. Uh, not nah. going with your team. <laughs> <laughs> like, We're not going to make it no it matter what should, we do. It should be terrifying. You should have a proper respect for, you know, the natural elements that are in play. You know, why does someone create a piece of music that's beyond them? Yeah. You know, Ravel. why yeah, <laughs> Why do people have breakthroughs in science? Why don't they just stick to what's normal and, oh, well, just the usual stuff? Why don't we just stick to Newtonian physics and, you know, why did Einstein even bother about all that stuff? You know what I mean? Like, why do all that? It's because they want to create, right? So that is the difference. Yeah, Brandon, why don't you create classical music? Sure. I don't want to create classical music. I'm just music. kidding. I want to create the easiest way of using the law of attraction. You are. 
<laughs> but you know that's the difference okay. like what mm-hmm. why you know if you're doing it to get something else mm-hmm. it's not gonna work if you know you have to just do it why do you climb out you don't climb mount everest to get something like no one does it to usually <laughs> some people might for the recognition but it's it's not going to be enough motivation you know what i mean or why does someone run a marathon right something just really hard that's terrifying that's so far beyond their abilities right um why because of the challenge because of the creation because of the, the energy that it evokes through you right so yeah that's that's creation that's the same thing when you have a goal we thrive on challenges we do i'm you know the fact, the fact that i used to do that sure and i don't and i i feel bad because feel i bad. feel like i feel like i can't do it anymore and something happened and now i have fear and resistance and i used to be able to do that just to create and for the challenge, and I apparently must have had the uh, structures in order because it sure. worked. And sure. I'm wondering if it's because I got older. Mm-hmm. No, it's not because you got older. There are plenty of, I mean, heck, how many old, how many older people? Oh, I don't say old people. How many older people? <laughs> oh, please. Are there? How many older people are there? Who are, Davis is older. She is. Who are still? going out and doing all sorts of crazy things in their 60s, 70s, 80s. Oh, my God. I've heard of people in their 90s doing crazy stuff. I mean, stuff. you just got to rebuild it back, that's all. Yeah, well, not for some people. They can still do it. <laughs> some people, they still manifest right, the, the health, the, the physical stamina they need. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, depending on what, what it is. You know what I mean? But there, there are people who are older who are still just as creative. What was that show that was on... Um, the guy and he, he took his mom through all this crazy stuff. Yeah. It was on TLC. Was his name Jazz or his uh, name? I. It was on TLC. Right. Yeah. But like. I didn't watch it because it was just a little too much. But. But why did mm-hmm. Beethoven, after he became deaf, how easy would it just be? You know, the path of least resistance is just to kind of stop writing music. But he didn't. Actually, technically it wasn't, but the easiest thing would have been to stop writing. But the structural tension yeah, of mean, creation pulled him forward. I'm going to keep writing. The Ninth Symphony was written as he was deaf. You know? And it's probably one of the most beautiful. It is. Maybe not for you, Brandon. Well, it's not my favorite. You, don't, you don't like singing, but... No. <laughs> but, mm. do you know what I mean? So it's... It, he kept doing it even though he was deaf. And I'm pretty sure he was pretty old. At the, I don't remember how old he was when he created the Ninth Symphony. Do you know? Does that make sense, though? You don't. It's not just because you're older. That's nothing to do with it. No, maybe not. Maybe not the age. I guess I, I have. I'm still reeling from all the things that happened, well, and that I've got to get out of that. You know. That happens. It takes a, time to recover. Bunch of stuff in my life that right. that feel like I got broken. You it's know. Like it happens. And it happens, but I I'm getting impatient. <laughs> like, okay, it happened. It's over now. You well, know. Set up that structural let's, tension of what you want. Let's move forward now. Move but forward, it, forward. And then and then I you know so theoretically I'm saying okay it's over that's the mm-hmm. past it's gone mm-hmm. you know I'm healthy I can do this and then all this crap hits me all the resistance hits me the anxiety mm-hmm. and the and you can't do this because you screwed up, and you know all that crap. So well, again, do you I, think, sometimes I feel like I just want to give up. Do you think someone who, you know, wants to climb Mount Everest finds it easy to train for it and to prepare for it mentally? And don't do you think they're they're not scared of it or terrified of it? Or, it takes years to know, train for that, you know. Or you know, mm-hmm. someone who maybe you know used to be an athlete and then maybe. You know, something happened and they couldn't walk anymore. They couldn't, and they had to relearn all that stuff. And then they eventually get back. I and mean, there are tons of stories of that. They get back to. Yeah, it. I just, I think I'm just beating myself up too much. I'm punishing. It's like, yeah. come on now, you know. I'm like whipping myself, like, you know. And that let's go on, now. And that come let's on now, now is a great. It's over now. That come on now is a great thing if channeled in the right direction. I mean. Well. That's great. Yeah. Come on now. When I do that, it tends to then, um, I don't know that that. When I do that, um, 
it's kind of um, uh, being 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 mean to myself. Well, sure. Um, yeah. And then the, the then, and then the resistance comes up. Right. Because that that's the part of me that's saying, you know, don't be mean to yourself. Um, well, you know, it's a whole. And so now I'm so confused about: should I be in this? Should I be in this MAGA? Should I be in the the, the hermit? Should I radical acceptance? I'm so confused about um, still, you know, because I read all the blogs and I'm thinking, yeah, that's where I want to be. And then it's not, obviously, not working for me. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm trying to do maybe everything too fast and keep up with you. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to, you're the only one who can really determine where you should be. Some people need to rest for a while and stay in the hermit, you know, and, and just sort of yeah, hang out. Yeah, I don't out. want to rest. <laughs> Some but people apparently. want to create and are okay with that resistance. I mean, it's going to Brandon hurt. Brandon had to rest for a long time. Sure. It's The Magus path is not an easy path, okay? It's just not. It's never going to yeah. be. Creation is not easy, okay? So that's why I kind of have a problem with, like, Abraham Hicks who says, you know, do whatever's easy and... and um, it should always feel good and it should never feel like a challenge or like effort or it's to go to the next level. And that's what I want to really focus on. Today, yeah. To go to the next level. I don't just mean a little bit more here and there. I mean, the next level entirely requires more energy. Like Justin said earlier, it requires, you know, a bit of a lot of courage. It's, going to be scary because it's totally new but and it's going to require things of you you have to align with that you have to become that person it's not easy i, I get that it's not easy it's never going to be easy you're never going to have a day where it's like yeah it can become easier but you're never going to say oh yeah you know I, i'm going to go to the next level and it's going to be totally easy it's not going to happen it's just not. You might have, you know, a bit of some plateaus where you say, you know, I've really gotten to the next level. Let me let me stay here a while and rest. I don't need to move on yet. And then you switch to the hermit for a while, and, you know, cool. Okay. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, I've, I remember I told you I I I was getting a lot. I had been getting a lot of passive income. Yes. You know, like the path of least resistance, and um, so I've been manifesting some. Passive stuff, but not actual money coming into my hands. Right, right, right. But things that were helping me save a lot, and people helping me without me asking, and totally <laughs> unexpectedly. Right. So that's a good, you know. I thought, okay, that's a good step, you know. And um, that's amazing. Yeah, a lot of stuff, and then all of a sudden, all this resistance. My vacation is on Monday, mm -hmm. and. I'm not going to go into it because this takes way too long, but um, just to, in a nutshell, just these last few days before I go, all this resistance is coming up. I even got sick, and I have to go on the plane with an earache, and um, yeah, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe this happened. Right. I never get sick, and uh, you know, uh, some girlfriends there that I was going to get together with, they're starting to fight because... I only have a few days, and they're fighting with. And then I, I'm, I'm not really into astrology anymore. But I was listening to this guy that I really like. He was talking about Mercury retrograde, and he goes, Mercury retrograde starts on Monday. That's the day I leave. So don't be surprised, mm -hmm. you know, if uh, you're time. traveling and things go wrong and techni tech, you know, tech technically things See, go okay. wrong. I'm gonna things stop fall you. Apart. I'm, I'm going yeah. to stop you. Do you see what you're doing? Sorry. You're, you're, are you problem-oriented or are you creation-oriented? Obviously problem. A huge amount of problem. <laughs> a creative. And I don't, but, I, but I was really excited about going. And then all of a sudden, all this stuff started coming up. Sure. But a creator says, oh, hey, stuff. That's great. Contrast. You know, resistance. Great. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. A creator yeah. says, you know what? I am going to have a wonderful, awesome vacation. <laughs> And, yeah. And then well, the I, I still intend then, to do and that. And then the subconscious mm -hmm. says, "No, you're not." And the creator says, "Yes, I am." <laughs> the subconscious, the creator says, oh, "Yes, I am." And the subconscious says, oh, 
subconscious. Oh, okay. so that's how it works. Okay. The creator says, I'm going to have a wonderful vacation. The subconscious says, what if, what if things go wrong? What about Mercury retrograde? The creator says, I don't care. The subconscious says, what about Mercury retrograde? The creator says, I don't care. <laughs> the subconscious says, oh, okay. And then it comes with another objection. Well, what about these friends arguing? Doesn't matter to me. <laughs> what about your earache? And yeah. The subconscious says, what about the earache? The creator says, I don't care. Yeah, and the doctor's telling me, oh, your ear's going to start. I mean, you've got to get these earplugs because you're going on a plane with an mm-hmm. earache. And I'm like, oh, no, because I, I, I don't know if any of you have ever flown when yeah. you had a yeah, cold and it hurts your ears a lot. Right. I haven't. That hasn't happened to me since I was like a teenager. Right. And then it happens right now, right? And I, I'm, I'm glad you said that, <laughs> Brandon, because uh, you did that little dialogue. Yeah. Because... I've been just kind of being like a little mouse and going, oh, right. oh no, my ear, oh no, right. it's a mercury retrograde. For all you, you know, it'll just be fine. Right. It's going to be fine. You Again, you have to choose, you have to make it non-negotiable, and the subconscious will argue, again, you can't expect to go against what the subconscious believes and not for it to put up a fight. It's going to put up a fight. Yeah, I, I just learned tonight what it's like to fight a really, really ripped, resist, ripping you up resistance. Well, actually, for the first you, don't, time. you don't fight it. You say, you know what, I'm not doing this. No, and I don't you, mean fight it. It's going to keep trying to fight, and you're going to say no. And it's gonna, yeah, okay. You know, it's yeah. like one of those. Um, Dive into it. Like and when I just be like, and he's like, I don't care. One, it's like one of those Chinese. <laughs> you ever, ever have one of those Chinese finger traps? The more you fight uh, it, the more it grabs on. And yeah, you, and then you let go, and it just comes right off. You know? It sure is a horrible feeling, though. This is the first time I've ever today <laughs> yeah. experienced that much resistance, mm-hmm. and I like all day, nonstop, that's last that's night. Level for you. And it's gone now. Right. When you when I started laughing, when you started doing that dialogue. Right. And all of a sudden, I realized, yeah, <laughs> it's right. just yeah, it is what it is, and just. I'm going to have a good time anyway. Right, yeah. That's the Magus. Right. The, um, Thank you. I'm going to have one, one final point. I'll get just a couple minutes over if you don't mind. One final, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. One final point I want to discuss. I've received two questions about this lately, so I figure it's probably a good thing to cover. So I, I a lot of people ask, you know, I have this desire – and I enter the zero state, and then I just don't care about my desire anymore. What's up with that? You know? And um, it's so bad that my cuckoo clock wants to sing about it. <laughs> but, you know, so... It's an interesting one. You know, why is it when I go into the zero state, my desire disappears? I can't get it. It's just, it's gone. I, I can't care about it. Is it good? after the zero state? In the after zero state. After you do it? No, in the zero state. In the do zero it? state. Oh, okay. Oh. Is it because I'm detached and it's a good thing, or is it, you know, something else? Or I said, no, it's, it's. You don't have the tension. It's no, it's because your desire was not a true heart-based desire. Remember in my tension post, that's I said, what I was going to say. Your desire um, must be a true heart-based desire. Your desire must be a creation. If your desire is a, I need to get out of this problem, then when you enter the zero state, your brain's like, hey, the problem's gone. And you don't what have I do with desires that I don't care that much about, like if I say it's just not worth trying to to do all to, to go down and do a meditation for, right? I just send it up to the universe as a prayer and don't think about it. Anymore. Sure. Well, that's because you already have the structure. What it is, it's, it's the hermit path. But what, well, I'm what saying, it is, is this, <clears throat> it's not a like you said. It's not something that matters to you that much. Right. Mm-hmm. But sometimes for some people it really does matter before they go down and then they go into the zero state and it's like, oh, it's gone. But that is because you're focused on the problem. Okay, so, you know, if, if, you, want, if you want this job because it's going to get you out of, out of unemployment, then you go down to the zero state and the subcon- or your, your subconscious says, hey, wait a minute, sorry, but there's <laughs> Hey, what? Did you hear that noise? Yeah. That was that was Twitter. Anyway, your subconscious says, "I have everything I need. I don't need to worry about unemployment." But 
The only support for the job desire was the avoidance of unemployment. So when yeah. you remove that anxiety, it's like, well, I don't care anymore. I'm detached. Now, some people will count that as success. It's it's not. It's just that you're not really creating. You're just avoiding a problem. If you – do you think – I'll go back to the guy who wants to climb Mount Everest. The guy who wants to climb Mount Everest, do you think he goes down to the zero state, which everyone does. Like Some people call it the zone, the zero, you know, whatever you want to call it. Do you think he goes down to that state and he says, I don't need to climb Mount Everest. I'm no. okay where I am. No, he does not. He says, I'm going to climb it. And he says, when I'm in this state, I want to climb it even more. And I yeah. feel even more confident mm-hmm. about it. Do you, do you think an artist who wants to create something, who wants to paint something, when he goes down into the zero state or when he feels aligned or in the zone, says – Hmm, it doesn't matter if I paint this or not. No. No. He says, oh, I get it. I'm aligned now. Now I can do it. It makes you more aligned. Right. So that's a good indicator. Yeah. No, it's not a good indicator if it just disappears in the zero state. That means No, I mean, it's a good, it's a good, good. test. It's, right. It's, it's a good it's test. A, it's a litmus it's a, test. It's a good test. Yeah, yeah that's what right. she meant. You don't want it to disappear in that zero state. That means right. it's... If, if it does, then it means that, you know, you were focused in a way that was problem-oriented. The only motivation was to get away from a problem, right? Okay. And that, that just doesn't exist in the zero state. So when you really want to create something and you enter into that zero state, it, it doesn't go away. It strengthens. It strengthens. Yeah. So that zero could, state yeah. is fine. Could it also just be that, well, I don't know, because could it also be, be that they just didn't because that's interesting that you want it and then you go to zero state it's not there could it also really just be and I'm just kind of curious that it was real it it just didn't matter to you it was real surfacy or it was the wrong thing or something like that if it's yeah if it, if it mattered to you outside of the zero state and it didn't yeah. matter to you inside the zero state yeah. I mean, the only reason I can think of is because it's not really a creation. Man, that's right. odd, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, it is pretty odd. That's like walking down a hill and you tripping me up, man. I have no reason. I'm not even sure I've <laughs> heard of that. I know. It, it, you know, it's <laughs> my job here. Yeah, think about that. That's my job. I know. Hey, that's my I mean, job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you know me that up book and... that you were, uh, that class that you took, Brandon, that yes. you love? Yes. The... Hypnosis yes. and the <clears throat> law of attraction. Yeah. Did he was he a hypnotist? I mean, did yes, he? Yes, he was a hypnotist. Hip, yes, Hip, hypnotherapist. So he, they don't like hypnotists. Hypnotherapist. Though. That's what I meant. So there was a lot about that in there, right? In the yes. Course. Well, yeah. sort of, yeah. But it was a lot about self hypnosis because it was about giving you the tools. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was a lot about self hypnosis, which is basically meditation. I mean, meditation right. is a fancy name, you know. So I, I don't do the self hypnosis. I just I just go into the zero state. That's you know, really what it is. Really, yeah. It, 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 hypnosis is a, a state of non resistance. So or zero state. Zero state. <laughs> well, does the zero is the zero state supposed to? I mean, is obviously you want it to last longer and longer. The zero state, right? Mm-hmm. Because I find yeah, that I'm not able literally. to sustain the state that long, but I'm able to sustain it long enough. Um, to get my desire in and feel good about it. Well, it matters, yeah. Um, be zen all day or anything. All you need. It. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to be zen all day. It just yeah, don't, I don't. Just don't worry about it the rest of the day. If you worry about it, you're, you killed it. You know. Well, I don't know. I think of the zero state as just being like a peaceful state without resistance, and that's right. when you jump in and and right. do it and do the the uh, yeah. So anyway, you know, going back to what Justin was saying, yeah, it's – now, if it's something like – again, if it's something where, like I said, I'll say I want to get money today, you know, I'll just intend it. And now that's something that doesn't matter either way. It's sort of I'm detached. That's not – that's just sort of a, you know, a hermit path sort of thing where I'm just intending it. Yeah. It's done because I already have the structures in place for it. So if you sort of say, you know, I want this – but I don't really feel the tension. I don't really feel the impossibility of it. It's sort of pretty pretty easy for me. You know, it's not – that doesn't mean you're problem or It actually means you're, you're fully aligned with it, so all you have to do is intend it and let it go, right? 
This is yeah. this is like if you have this huge desire and then you go into zero state and it's gone. It's like, where to go? That's you know, weird. that's mm. that's totally different. And that means it wasn't creation. Yeah. It wasn't creation. No, I, that is not. weird. No. Yeah. Yeah. You'll have more like that on I'm, Saturday for whoever comes, because there'll be lots of um, points just like this. I'll really define them, and I'll send out. I'm gonna try to see if I can create a like a PDF or something of the points like to refer back to afterwards. Don't do a PDF for Justin's sake. Well, I'll send the text to him. Oh, okay. But a PDF is nicer for everyone else. Well, either... Yeah, you can... Um, I just know you forget doesn't matter. sometimes. Yeah. No, I'll just... I'll send you the ten points, but... But, um... You know, we I'm going to try to do it. I'm going to try to do it, too. Okay. It'll be $17. Take a leap of faith. And, and yeah. um... You know, are are you like non-available that day or just? I'm not available that day, but okay. I'd still want to get the sure. like Justin, you sure. know, get the right the the information. Okay. So, Would it be a recording? Is it something you're going to speak about? Yes, it'll be a recording, and you'll get the yeah. PDF. Yeah. But my assistant guy will kill me. But I'm um, working on another gig, Brandon. So. Sorry. Yeah, that's cool. I'm just, working on getting another gig going, man. Saturdays so I got to go over there on Saturday. Sundays are just, I find. I'm getting my hair done <laughs> for, for my trip. Ah, I see. That's very important. Yes. Ah, uh, so, come on. You so, can just let um, it go. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. I mean, I would, do, <laughs> I would do Sunday, but it's just, I don't know. Sunday doesn't seem to be a good day for many people. You know. I've got really thick, crazy, curly hair. Oh. And yeah. it looks like. It looks like a gigantic tree right now. Really? So I thought it would be a good idea. To get a does <laughs> um, for those of you who want to be there, does Sunday work better or later Saturday or something? Because I'm I'm willing to shift on the time. Uh, for me, it would either be like it would. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Sunday. I, I got to find out Saturday if Sunday works for me. Because those I'm gonna I, I'll tell you about it later next week. I got something going, man. That's cool. For me, Sunday Sunday works. Sunday. Yeah. What about you, Justin? But whatever you know, whatever the majority is. What about be, you, Justin? If if it would be later Sunday, like I don't know, it's on three, four o'clock, but I'd have to. Let me definitely tell you uh, on. I'll be able to tell you on Saturday. Okay. I've got um. You, what about you, friend? That'd be like one o'clock your time. Um, uh, one o'clock my time on Sunday. Yes. Oh, one o'clock my time, Pacific yes. time. Right. Yeah, that's that's great. Yeah. All right. It, it's how, not really how long is it? How, how long? How long is uh, it? Uh, probably probably ninety minutes, just because there's ten uh-huh. points and it's sixty yeah. minutes of requirement. Yeah, I'm just going to be home packing, so one point it's every fine. six minutes. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that fast. <laughs> I don't want to get questions. All right, so let's let's try. Um, Justin, do you think you can settle for like four four o'clock? Yeah, I mean, strange. yeah, just do Sunday. Sunday work. Let's do Sunday. Yeah, that seems to be okay. Better. I, I don't better know. Than then I'll miss else. it too if it's Sunday. Saturday. So four o'clock That's true. time. All right, let's do four yeah. Sunday. And oh Christine, great! Christine will be there. Fran will be there. Justin Yay. will be there. I'll set it up tonight. You guys can get it. And, thank you, uh, thank else, you, thank else, you. Else yeah, it, yeah, because it mm-hmm. has to be later because I have to be at the church all afternoon. I oh should... yeah, what time are you back from your? Probably by Jody's two. Mass. Okay, let's do four. Let's do four. Okay. okay. All right, that sounds Hopefully good. Hopefully, so I won't we'll, be we'll dead four. tired. Well, if you are, then whatever. Okay. Let's do four, and um, so that's you know, and for the people who are listening, I'll send out that link. Okay. And um. If you want to get there, I mean, I'll create the link. For those who are listening, it's going to be probably at cocreationcoaching.org slash 10 keys. So number 10, one zero, K-E-Y-S, 10 keys. And that will take you to the class. All right. And uh, we'll do that. So, all right. Well, this was a great. Oh, you're not going to send it out? I should I, type I, it I am, in. I am going to send Don't type it in yet. I have to create it. Okay. <laughs> just for the record. <laughs> oh, people weren't listening. Well, it's not till Sunday. We've got some time. Yeah, you have time. You, know? you have time. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Right. So uh, this is great. Thank you, everyone. Right. Thanks, everyone, okay, for joining. Thank you. Thank right. you. Hope you have a wonderful week. And for those who will be there Sunday, I'll see you Sunday. All right. We'll yeah. see you. See you Sunday. Bye, everyone. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Yeah. Okay.
Thank you. Bye.